My name is Shannon Morgan, and welcome to Bigfoot Encounters Narrated. Spalding County, Georgia, was one of the more charming places I've lived. About 50 yards from our property stood a beautiful but eerie graveyard. It seemed like there was often a thick layer of mist, lingering throughout it, even when there was none through the rest of town. Maybe there's a scientific explanation for that, and I'm just naive. I had quite a bit of trouble sleeping throughout my childhood years. For whatever reason, I would often wake up and stay up to watch the sunrise. My whole life, people have told me I'm a bit of an odd soul, and the older I got, the more sense that sentiment made. I was never much into the things that the other kids were. Television has always been remarkably uninteresting, and I frequently ate lunch alone intentionally because there were very few peers who I felt I could relate to. It's not that I was a mean kid by any stretch. It's just that, from a young age, it was very apparent that I was on a different frequency, and sometimes I wonder if my experiences watching the entity were in any way connected to that notion. There was a somewhat tall fence lining on the cemetery's perimeter, but since my bedroom was on the second floor, I could usually see a lot of what was going on inside there. Occasionally, while I was watching the sunrise, I'd notice a large dark figure crawling between the graves. Sometimes it would move quickly across the landscape. Other times, it would slowly weave its way around various graves, appearing to sniff the ground. Even though this creature had four long limbs, its motions reminded me of a snake slithering. It seemed to be incredibly flexible, like it was capable of bending its joints in almost any direction. When I first started observing this strange animal, I had no idea it was a Sasquatch. I don't think I had yet even heard that word before. I had heard of Bigfoot, but the thing I saw in the cemetery didn't initially remind me of a bipedal, ape-like creature. Anyway, I used to think Bigfoot could only be found in the Pacific Northwest region of our country. Every time I saw the animal, it was only for a brief glimpse. It seemed as though it used the graveyard to move from one section of the forest to another. I never saw it on the road, but judging by the direction I usually saw it heading, it must have crossed the nearby street many times. That makes me wonder if any drivers passing through the area ever saw it too. It wasn't the busiest of streets outside that house, but several daily drivers did use it. My parents didn't consider my claims until my grandmother moved in with us, and she told them she saw the same thing. Although she was 89, she was still pretty mentally sharp so my dad couldn't blame her alleged sightings on dementia. By this point, my parents seemed to believe that we saw something unusual. Still, I recall my dad making some remark about how it must be a stray dog making its way through the area. For the most part, he continued to be dismissive. It was kind of annoying, honestly. Yes, I was young, but I wasn't stupid. I knew the difference between a dog and an animal that was unlike anything I had ever seen before. And then there was this one day where I arrived home from school to find a bunch of commotion going on in the cemetery, and even overlapping into our yard. I distinctly remember the small group of kids on my school bus hanging their heads out the windows, desperate for a clue as to what had happened. Even the bus driver took a few additional moments after I got off, yearning for an explanation. Although our town was pleasant to live in, it seemed like nothing exciting ever happened. Therefore, I can empathize with the heightened curiosity. Unfortunately, I don't think any of them ever learned the truth. Since a few police officers were talking to my mom, I was so worried that something might have happened to one of my family members, particularly my grandma. But I soon discovered that it was someone at the cemetery who had fallen victim to a horrific encounter. The authorities were merely asking my family about what they saw, because it turned out my mother was the one to call them over. I wouldn't have even needed to ask to know that the strange animal was involved in the debacle. According to my mother, she was folding laundry upstairs when she heard someone shouting from outside. It sounded to her like it was coming from the opposite side of where her bedroom faced, so she instead approached my bedroom window. She immediately saw the carnage in the cemetery, and she couldn't believe her eyes when she observed the brutish animal attacking the groundskeeper. I can imagine that she experienced a whirlwind of emotions at that moment. Not only was she staggered by the sight of this nightmarish creature, but she also discovered that my grandma and I hadn't misconceived anything about it. There it was, brutally attacking a man in plain view. My mother didn't see the very beginning of the confrontation, 
but it had sounded to her like someone was yelling at another person or animal to scram. But soon, those demands morphed into screams. Since I wasn't there, I can't say for sure. But it sounded like the groundskeeper was trying to scare the creature off after he spotted it digging into the soil around a tombstone. Nobody was willing to share with me the specific details of what happened to the man. And I'm assuming it's because they were extremely gory. I know that to be the case, because I did manage to get a glimpse of the body, and it was severely mangled. I suspect the man's intestines had gotten yanked from his torso. I don't even remember seeing the head, so there's always the chance that it was either smashed into a pile of mush or removed altogether. At the time, my mother especially claimed that she turned away from the scene because it was so violent, but I'm now confident that she's making that up because she felt it inappropriate to share that type of thing with me. Anyways, I was told to tend to my homework in my bedroom shortly after I got home. I quickly got the impression that pretty much everyone there wanted me out of the way. I spent a lot of time observing the investigation from my window. It looked to me like there was quite a few divots all over the cemetery. I have no idea if those were the outcome of the attack, or if the investigation crew caused them. Since there were so many people, and even some odd-looking machinery, my view was almost always obstructed. They were there for a while, but the darker it got, the harder it became to make out anything that was happening. I remember there being a lot of weird-looking lights placed all over the ground. And I'll admit, I don't know a lot about crime scene investigations, so there's a good chance that I could be exaggerating the strangeness of something very routine. Crew members came and went over the next few days, but the interest died down a lot quicker than I would have assumed. It very much seemed like the authorities wanted to move on from the area as soon as possible probably to deter further attention and further spreading of rumors. As far as I know, we never received even the most minuscule update on anything. I was hoping we would get at least a half ass explanation of what it was that crawled about the graveyard. If it hadn't been for all the eyewitnesses' accounts now on the web, I'm not confident I would have ever had an accurate idea regarding the things that occurred in the cemetery. Many years went by where I didn't put the pieces together that what I saw was a Sasquatch. I had always imagined that kind of animal to look more like a gorilla, but taller. In case I wasn't already clear, that is not how this thing looked. I would even go as far to say that it looked like an overgrown hyena when it was moving on all fours, which it almost always did whenever I saw it. I've questioned whether the animal might have been what is known as a dogman, but it didn't have a protruding snout or pointed ears. Its head seemed much more ape-like to my eyes. My grandma seems convinced that what she saw was a humongous weasel. I love her dearly, but that just sounded ridiculous. If she hadn't described what I saw, I probably would have assumed we were looking at two very different organisms. I feel bad for the man who lost his life, but I also feel fortunate to have seen something that so few people get to. In a way, it kind of feels as though Mother Nature let me in on a little secret. If you have an encounter you'd like to share or have narrated, email me at bigfootencountersnarrated at gmail.com. I look forward to hearing from you. Thank you so much for listening.